When I was in high school, I was asked to be a delegate to our conference annual meeting. And somehow while I was there, the high school delegates were asked to provide the entertainment one evening. So we took our task and we got to talking and I don't know what came over us, but we decided that instead of coming up with some sort of silly song or skit or something, that we would create a presentation about how we as young people should be taken seriously and valued as leaders in our own right. So we got ourselves an easel and some paper and we prepared our presentation. I remember being very nervous because it was clear we were asked to provide entertainment and instead we came up with a lecture. But it turned out just fine and we got a standing ovation not because we were funny or because we were entertaining them but because they sort of saw our point it seemed. It seems like we stole the show that evening. And so too with the young people in our Bible stories today. In both the story of healing and in the feeding of the 5,000, it's children who steal the show, who save the day. The young slave girl shows the way to healing in our story from 2 Kings. And in the feeding of the 5,000, which incidentally, 5,000 is referred to as the number of men present, plus women and children. So there would have been a lot more people there. But we heard, we heard the Luke version of the story today, and I actually read it like four times because I was sure that it had the part in it where a boy brings forward the basket of the fish. So we're just going to pretend that that was there. That's in John, but you know we'll just pretend that it was there. So it is the kid who brought forward the food for feeding all of those people. But it begs the question, how often do we let the children lead us? And I think of the children here at UCUC. If you have not been privileged to stay and observe communion with them, I invite you to do so. When we have communion, we're nice and orderly, and we get to our spots, and we take it all reverently. They come running from Sunday school up to the front of the table. They eagerly stand around, and we tell the story together. And they know what we're doing at the table. They know that we are remembering Jesus. They know that we remember that Jesus gathered his friends and told them that this meal would help them remember him. And I give them their first servings, and then they're so eager for seconds. Who wouldn't want more life-giving bread, really? I mean, come on. Or the joy with which they brought the blessing to the congregation when we remembered our baptisms. Watching their serious faces, they knew their task of blessing was very monumental and the joy on you all's faces as that happened. You haven't had the privilege of seeing this, I would guess, but watching our preschool kiddos as they watch the upgrades happening to our play yard. If you've not seen what's going on out there, we've got new grass laid, we've got new concrete laid. Here they were watching the concrete being poured. They are just mesmerized at what is happening out there. Or the willingness of a child to get messy as they make something beautiful, something creative. They're not afraid. What would happen if we let the children lead us? We might find ourselves approaching church with a desire for seconds rather than an obligation that it's Sunday at 1030, so this is what we're going to do. We might find ourselves eager to create to get a little messy, rather than being worried that whatever creation we come up with is not museum worthy. 
we might find ourselves observing what's happening around us with joy rather than being frustrated about how our road or neighborhood or favorite store is impacted by construction or whatever's happening that's getting in our way. What might happen? As you heard Sally and I talk about a little bit earlier, the United Nations has declared February 11th as the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. And in that introduction, as written by the worship guide, Spill the Beans, it helps sort of capture how this day might connect with our scripture. And not unlike our Bible, where women often are unnamed, you'll notice that girl had no name in our Bible story today, and the secondary characters, they're often these secondary people, Women in science still struggle to have the same prestige and pay as men in their fields. Not, not in Bible days, but today in 2024. We like to think that we've come really far from our Bible days and that we're really disconnected from those long time ago things. We're not quite done yet. One of my kids' favorite books, though, was Ada Twist, Scientist, by Andrea Beatty. And books like this continue to increase the likelihood that girls will lead the way in science. So if you've not read this one, it's a great one. And if you were here last week, you heard Haley and Ava, who presented for us with their budding nonprofit, Rescue Terra, and they talked with us about how we might do ordinary, everyday things to help take care of our earth. High school sophomores starting a nonprofit of their own, cold calling a church saying, can I come talk to you about the environment? Girls leading the way. They're kind of following in the footsteps of Greta Thunberg, who makes waves in the environmental science movement, though has a, a bigger recognition than Ava and Haley, but give them some time. The children shall lead us. In science and in the church. I think a lot of times when we read our ancient Bible stories, we sort of get bogged down in the, that was a long time ago, it's not relevant for us, it's so problematic. But sometimes, like today, we are reminded that a child can lead us. And sometimes we are reminded that when we approach life through the eyes of a child, we might be better off. So go and play. Splash in a puddle. There's more rain in the forecast. Even just drive your car through the puddle. Be careful of the deep ones because that's not good. But see the big splash. Giggle uncontrollably. Stand in awe of the world around you. If you've ever noticed a kid get real excited about a bug or a rainbow, I bet many of us have been noticing the rainbows of late. Pay attention. Stand in awe. And don't be afraid to approach faith with the eagerness and awe of a child. For in all of this, we will find our God. Thanks be to God. Amen.